Welcome back, guys, um, to the Love Lounge. Welcome I, back. I'm Kiana. That is Gary. Hello. Good morning. Good morning or afternoon. Or Good evening. morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Um, so our last episode, we spoke about gender norms and um, or are there such a thing called gender norms? What do people do in their relationship or what works best for us? And um, I had made a mention that sometimes out, um, external sources, they'll kind of put their input in. Um opinions like mm-hmm. buttholes and um <laughs> and they'll oh why are you cooking when she should be cooking or why is he at home while his wife is out working and so some people may look at it as like the man is weak or the man is more sensitive and i we've mentioned that there was a time when gary wasn't working because he was in between the navy and the fire department and for me i never looked at it as any source of weakness because i'm like you just served your country and now you're still giving back to your community Mm -hmm. um so i never looked at it as oh my husband's lazy he's weak he's too sensitive he's not manly enough but there are people who look at it as oh that's a weakness Mm -hmm. um i don't know if you've ever come across that personally um or even in like today's society, if you're emotional, if you're in tune with your sensitive side, um, if you're seen crying, people may look at you and think like, oh, what's wrong with him? Mm-hmm. Like there's some profanity words, but they may mm-hmm. call you female dog mm-hmm. um, for or was or was um just i mean these are things you hear. It's the truth. It's out there in society. This is how people talk uh, talk where am i from for real talk brooklyn Brooklyn. (laughs) um this is how people talk to each other sometimes or you'll hear people say man up like i've seen these things on instagram where little boys crying is like man up and i'm like why is it that a man is not supposed to cry why or a boy is not supposed to cry Mm -hmm. why is it that a man can't stay home why is it that a man can't be in tune with being more sensitive to show his soft side because we don't always have to be hard and have this hardened exterior Mm -hmm. as a man. How you feel about that? So again, it's, I kind of touched on it before is like, I was raised by mostly women. Like I only had like my grandfather, my dad was like there as well, but it was like more, a little bit more distant of a relationship with that. So I never had that example of what it was to be a man. So it was like, I had to kind of learn that on my own and come into what that meant, especially for me and like growing up and watching other, other boys or whatever grow up and watch how they are, how they interact with women, how they interact with each other, how I interacted with everyone else around me. And I kind of had to learn where that place was. And I always felt like, okay, this is not normal for me to be sensitive in front of other people or around other people. And I felt like there's, again, there, there's these shifts where it's like, I have a best friend, like, you, you know, my best friend. And mm-hmm. I could say like, I love you, bro. But like back growing up in high school, if you said that, that's like that sentence. Like mm-hmm. you can't say something like that to another, another guy or whatever without it being anything further than that or yeah. people having things to say about it or Mm -hmm. having their opinion on what you're saying or how you're expressing Mm -hmm. or what your relationship is with that person exactly yeah and even like with tears or crying like you hear that you're like man up why are you crying don't be a little girl or whatever and they'll say stuff like that to you so like you always as a male have to have this wall that you kind of build up around your emotions and protect Mm -hmm. those emotions and then even I've seen where they say in a relationship you should have that vulnerability and let that sensitive side show and let that sensitive side go. But you've also have those examples where they say a woman won't respect you for showing that sensitivity or they look at you as less than. Mm -hmm. And they, they say, like, no matter what, you might not see it or they might not say it, but they will lose respect for you for seeing you cry or seeing you less than. Uh, strong or at your strongest or with your strength if mm-hmm. they see that weakness they'll take advantage of it those are like things that we hear as men or we learn growing up and you have like you do see examples of that where 
a female would say like nah like that ain't it like i don't want a girl Mm -hmm. essentially i want a man but i think that that's i get what you're saying and i feel like it depends because if um if you say to the guy like oh you can't afford this car he's like Mm -hmm. that's completely ridiculous Mm -hmm. but there has been times like if there's a death in your family or some type of big life change Mm -hmm. and um you cry about it i don't expect somebody not to have emotions because if they don't have any emotions then i'm gonna start thinking you have some type of mental illness or i'm gonna start thinking that something's wrong with them because i'm like okay they just watch some type of like in, in the day and age we go through, like, look at the news and mm-hmm. some type of mass shooting or something, and they don't have any emotion. They're just like, well, okay. I'd be like, I mean, that's you could crazy. say that that's me. I'm cold. You're cold, but I'm you're so not. Cold Gary, cold don't stuff. don't talk about your cold No, stuff. I'm not saying I'm not sensitive or I don't share emotions with you, but yeah. I am cold to certain things. I think you have to protect yourself, mm-hmm. but you're not like, mm, okay, life goes on. Like, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? Um, th- I think the first time I saw you cry was six flags i think that was the very first time uh, when uh, and you were at you were we were sitting in the steps and um in my house in brooklyn and you got emotional but it was like you were so mean and angry the mm-hmm, whole time mm-hmm. and it's because you're trying to protect you're trying to yeah. and i like i am a nag i, I will break now. you <laughs> down what did steve urkel say you're wearing me <laughs> down that is me to the full i'm like i am going to make you admit what's going on Mm -hmm. to me because I know this is not who you are. Mm -hmm. And so to me, when I see you cry, I cry Mm -hmm. because I'm like, it takes a, I know it takes a lot out of you to share that vulnerability. And we've been together for 16 odd years going on 17 years, Mm -hmm. been married for 10. And I can honestly say it's probably been a handful of times that I've seen you cry. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen you get emotional and tear up for like, again, death or something like that. Or when you see me hurting from like missing my mom Mm -hmm. or, you know, with the infertility stuff, Mm -hmm. I was emotional and I could see the hurt in you, Mm -hmm. but you didn't necessarily cry. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's anything wrong with showing that emotion. But when you are raised to man up, Mm -hmm. be hard. Mm -hmm. Why are you crying? Mm -hmm. And even sometimes I hear people say it to little kids, girl or boy. I'm like, why are we teaching them that tears or being sad or being hurt is not a good thing? And I respect you so much more because you let me in on that sensitive side. But how do you share that vulnerability with somebody if for 20, 25, 30 years, whatever it is that you get into your relationship, that you've just had this wire fence chain Mm -hmm. around your heart? Mm -hmm. And I could speak to the Six Flags situation because it kind of goes back into the whole gender roles thing. It's um, you had to pay for Six Flags for me. I didn't have a job. I didn't have money. Like we didn't. Like I didn't come from money. I know you didn't come from money either. I was gonna say where my money was. You at least you had to pay for me. You had mm-hmm. to pay for my food, and that like tore me up. You didn't inside. even eat because yeah. you were too embarrassed. See, I didn't even. I don't even remember. That I asked part. if you wanted something to eat. You were like, "No, I'm good." And I was like, "Babe, you haven't eaten," and you like barked at me. Yeah. All I had to offer was driving y'all there. And it was like, I I felt like less of a man, especially in front of your friends, like that I couldn't do those. And like, nobody was thinking of things. it like that. I understand. But in my head, in your like, head, but and you made it more of a situation. So mm-hmm. then when they asked, then it was like, yeah, yeah. And I, I guess it took a lot for, I guess, yeah, you broke me down, like to the point where I was like, OK, this is why. And and it was it was hard to go through that and experience that. But I think because of those like norms and those expectations, I built up that wall and it was like I didn't know how to express to you what I was feeling in that moment. And I guess that's where that anger or lashing out came from. Yeah. And that's why I I guess I shielded the hurt by using anger and Mm -hmm. that's unhealthy it's 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 so unhealthy and a lot of people do that where because they don't want to be crying or be seen as sensitive they end up just seeming angry and aggressive Mm -hmm. um and i think that's for any gender people and it's like why is she so angry why is he so angry and what I realized is sometimes people aren't angry, they're hurting, mm-hmm. but they can't share it because society has told you to signs of sensitivity is a sign of weakness. Mm-hmm. So do, on the 
opposite end of that do women are known to be a little bit more emotional than men and i feel like maybe there's a like flip to where women are a little bit harder and changing what that emotion is and they're putting that to the forefront Mm -hmm. do you experience that at all or notice that or are you just like nope i'm aware my emotions emotions on my sleeve and i think in the workplace i try to have a hard exterior but there's people at my job that i do share when Mm -hmm. i'm like if i'm angry i'm gonna cry and then uh, but i kind of pull myself back so everybody doesn't see that Mm -hmm. um or i get emotional with maybe one or two people that i'm close with but um i'm you know me you look at me the wrong way in this house and i'm like are you mad at me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just feel like why hide my emotions from the people, maybe from this world, that's fine. Everybody in this world doesn't have to know what's going on with me because you don't want somebody to see you and think you're vulnerable. And 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 I think being, sensi- being sensitive and emotional does show a sign of vulnerability. Mm-hmm. But the world doesn't have to see that. Yeah. But as my husband or with my children, like the other day something happened and our daughter said something to me and I got my eyes got so teary and she said, mommy, you okay? And I want her to see it's okay to get emotional. Um, and there's a right way to show these um, emotions and express yourself. And I, the world may be hard. And even in the last episode when I was like, I, I want you in my life, I don't need you. That was me trying to put up that blockade and be harder and conform to what the world wants me to be. But I realized I have to be true to myself. And if I'm an emotional person, I'm going to own that. And when I'm in a safe space of the confines of my marriage and my house and my family, if I feel like I need to cry, I'm going to let that out and talk to you about it. Because mm-hmm. the flip side is when I'm not emotional with you and I'm trying to be hard, how was our relationship then? Mm-hmm. I'm walking around mm, 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 mm-hmm. mm, 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 and you're trying to touch me. Don't touch me. And I act so crabby and that's not healthy either. I'd rather be emotional. You know, something's wrong. We sit, we talk about it. If I have to cry it out, if I need a hug, if we need to go for a walk, if I need to go by my, be by myself for a little bit, pray, whatever it may be to let out that emotion that I'm having. I think there is a place that everybody needs to have that sensitive side and you have to find the person that you're capable of being sensitive to. I hope that I'm that for you since society tells you you can't be sensitive. You are. I mean, I, that's that's one of the most difficult parts is finding that person that you can trust to be vulnerable. And you vulnerable still, with. even though you trust me, you still take a while to say I'm hurting or I'm... I'm still a work in progress. That's, that's essentially what it is. Like, it's... Like, I'll be happy as ever or whatever in my head. Like, I'll be fine. Kiana's like, like, just like you just said, are you mad at me? Why are you mad at me? I'm like, what are you talking about? What is Because you also don't have a very approachable face all the time. Sorry. We were going to kind of talk about that. Like, you could probably hear our dog in the background, but we... That's a part of life. She's probably just protecting the house or something. But From the dog that's walking outside. That's yeah, all it is. Yeah. But um, sometimes you'll be sitting there and you're happy in your head and mm-hmm. you're like, in your head. And when you're driving, you <laughs> And I'm like, what is wrong with his eyebrows? Why is he so angry? And I'm like, are you okay? Are you sure? Are you going I through think, something? I think the mean streets of Brooklyn just, it just affected me. Like even in boot camp, they, they messed, they were like, why do you look like you have the world of problems on your shoulders and you're like, you want to fight us at every point? I'm like, and I'll just start smiling and laughing and they're just like, almost like what you said, this guy is a psychopath. Like, yes! what, is, what is wrong with him? And it's, you can't, I don't know, in New York, I don't, I feel like people look at you as you're weird if you're just like walking around smiling. Yes, because one time somebody said hi to me and a doggone freaked out. I went home and I was like, mommy, this guy said hi to me. She was like, people say hi. Yeah. I was there's, like, where? There's, there's no Southern hospitality. No. She was like, in the islands, people say good morning. And I said, well, he needs to not do that. This is not uh, Jamaica. This is yeah. Brooklyn. <laughs> say hi to me. I thought he was going to kidnap me. Um, But anyways, I just think that, like you said, you, you, you carry this exterior. But because I've been with you so long, I've kind of sat there and like chip, 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 chipped away at mm-hmm. it. And so for me, and it sometimes is exhausting, but we also kind of made this rule, which I break every single time, mm-hmm. where, you know what the rule is? The three questions. Yeah. 
if I ask you what's wrong three times and eventually uh, by the third time you have to tell me Mm -hmm. break it all the time I get to like number eight and Gary's like I'm done asking at this point and I'm like no you're supposed to keep trying (laughs) um (laughs) but I will ask him and be like you're not going to sleep and I will literally flip him over on the bed and sit on top of him and be like and I'll be laughing at her I'm like there's nothing wrong (laughs) like I'm just in my own head like I don't know what I'm working out like it might be Darwin's theory of relative I don't I have no idea um, I'm mixing all kind of theories right now like yo we have been out of school for too long why did we even learn I'm these in school things? but I'm not learning none of that <laughs> that is true you're in school um do you are you happy or do you feel happier that even though society tells us that we shouldn't be too sensitive that you have started to work on being more of an emotional or expressive or sensitive or whatever you want to call it person. I think so. And I notice a difference because like at work now, people are like, oh, Gary's always smiling. He's always happy. He's always smiling. And I'm like, that's a shift and a change because it's like, like you said, I've always had that RBF, like that Mm -hmm. face. that's like, don't mess with me. Don't, don't, don't come here or whatever. And it's like, for me, it's almost, especially being in the South now, it's it's just like you said, you see somebody that says hi or is very friendly or is different. And it's like, what what is wrong with what is going on? What is wrong with them? And I think it, it takes a lot to chip away at that. And mm-hmm. I think slowly I'm getting to that point. It's not overnight that it's going to change that yeah. aspect of my masculinity or whatever. Well, what's funny to me is as non-sensitive as you appear, Mm -hmm. um, Gary will be in the supermarket and we're talking and he's just like, looks like he's just completely not excited to be out at the supermarket, just pushing the cart behind me. (sighs) We need bananas. (laughs) Get the bananas. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to run to this aisle to get this. And I'll come back and be like, this person just started talking to me. Why are they talking to me? And I'm like, I personally would not approach Gary if I was on the street because he don't look approachable. But it's something about the South. I don't know. I think it's also your spirit. You um, don't exude that you're like this angry person, even though your face looks it. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about facial expressions, body language. Mm -hmm. If you look angry, I'm not going to talk to you Mm -hmm. unless like you're in my way. Um, But people will still come up to you. It's, It's the craziest thing. Like I was in the store one time and this guy just came up to me. It was like, I don't know if I told you this story. He was like uh my wife is leaving me can you yes can you pray for me i'm like what what made you think that i am gonna be the i'm like yeah but in the back of my head again i'm just like new york i'm like yes i'll pray for you but i ain't gonna stop here and close my eyes because i don't know if you're trying to set me up like in the back of my head i'm I'm always on that alert i do remember that because that night we ended up praying for him yes and that is but again that goes back to like him being vulnerable mm-hmm. and in touch with mm-hmm. his sensitive side to go up to a complete stranger to be like, yo, pray for me. And I felt bad that I didn't like stop there and pray with him. And I think that's what he wanted and needed. And I saw a lady praying with him. I was like, Crap, I should have I should have did that. But I was like, I still have that wall mm-hmm. of like, nah, I, 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 I don't know if I could be vulnerable in front of this person right now because Again, it goes back to also that protector mode. It's like, no, I got to protect myself because I, I don't know. I don't know what you're about what to you're do. Trying to I, do. If, I, if I held your hand or whatever, because you know sometimes yeah. you pray your whole hands. I don't know if mm-hmm. you have something on your hand that you're mm-hmm. gonna put on my skin. And in this day and age, you don't know. Again, um, like yeah, with this society, it's sad that our neighbor is coming to us saying like, "Hey, I need help," mm-hmm. and that is sometimes. Uh, not cry for help, but sometimes a trap. Yeah. And that's where those those guards come from, and that's mm-hmm. where it's scary. And I'm like, I'm always telling my sisters, like, watch out for everybody. Watch I mean, if I, that happened to me, I think I asked you, I said, so if that happened to me, would you have been mad if I stood with the person and prayed in the aisle? Mm-hmm. And you were like, yes. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, why? Because, and I was like, I would have prayed like this. It had one eye open. But would it have been genuine? I mean, the prayer is still there. Mm -hmm. But if I'm protecting myself, you know, but you don't want to be stupid. But um, I'm kind of on a tangent. But Mm -hmm. it it goes back again to that sensitive side and showing that vulnerability. Um, It's like, yo, I feel like I'm about to lose it all. 
I I want my marriage to work. Can this person pray with me? And to be in a supermarket just asking random people. Mm -hmm. um, but I also feel like we shouldn't have to wait till we're at rock bottom mm -hmm. to be able. And I think that was what it was with you. It wasn't rock bottom, but like with the Six Flags situation, it was like you felt like you were so low mm -hmm. before you can share with me instead of saying before like if we're looking at what do you call those graphs a line graph mm -hmm. before you go below the zero you get into the negative and you're at one or a zero let's work on getting yourself back up don't wait till you're at rock bottom to then cry or mm -hmm. to be sensitive or to say i need help it's okay to need help as a man it's okay to what and was I, that head shake no, about i think it goes <laughs> to that masculinity or whatever and that's probably what that guy was going through he was just like no i'm not that like that's not what i was raised as or what I was raised and it was an older gentleman so I know he was probably deeper entrenched in I guess uh masculinity versus femininity or any type of uh sorry uh, or any type of sensitivity mm -hmm. and it was hard it might have been harder for him to fix that point and not go to zero mm -hmm. so it was like I just realized I lost everything and I mm -hmm. think that's when it hits most men mm -hmm. and i think that's the hard part is like where do i find myself to get out of that like mm -hmm. how do i find the best way or how do i recognize that this is causing some type of hurt to my life or my relationship mm -hmm. and i think it's relationship i think it's finances mm -hmm. i think it's knowing your life is in danger whatever it may be don't wait and think if I ask for help or if I, if I cry out for help that I'm weak for doing that. Um, one of the sayings that I've heard growing up is no man is an island. And yes, as a man, your job is to protect and to provide. But again, we're in a partnership. So don't wait until you have exhausted every option and then be like, babe, we're going to lose it all. We're about to get evicted. And then I'm like, why didn't you come to me six months ago when you knew we were going down this path? But a lot of guys feel like if I let her know, she's mm -hmm. going to look at me as, as weak mm -hmm. or she may leave me. But by the time you do all of that, now it's I've had secrets from you. Mm -hmm. I've lied to you, mm -hmm. you know, and you're thinking you're doing the best. And so sometimes it's OK. Like now when you look at me, and you're like, babe, you know, I need help or, you know, how are we going to work this out? Or I even if you don't necessarily say I need help, but you're like, what do you think about this? It makes me feel included. It shows me that, oh, you don't just feel like you're high and mighty in the house, mm -hmm. that we're truly a partnership. Mm -hmm. And if anybody looks at that as a weakness, I think that's just crazy because you're trying to be involved with that person. And when people look and say, oh, that's weak, and then the man shuts down and completely pulls away or withdraws or then steps out and finds somebody that is accepting of that, then you hear, oh, well, he just blindsided me with this or that. And I'm just like, did he blindside you or did he try to share? And you also didn't create that safe space either, mm -hmm. you know? So the, the other end of that, because we spoke about the male view of that, for the female views, yes. how should women go about viewing those relationships where there might be too much sensitivity or might not be enough? So I think I said it earlier, like if you have a guy that's just crying because the sky is blue or because it's a full moon tonight or because he stubbed his toe. I don't want to be mean. You can stub your toe and it really hurts. And so, yeah, eyes tear up, whatever. But like for everything, I probably would be like, this This is not this is not necessarily, what, what, what is going on? What kind of trauma you have in your life mm -hmm. that everything makes you feel like you need to cry? Um, because even with being raised by all women, you didn't always feel like you needed to cry for everything. Um, maybe you did when you were younger and somebody did tell you to man up. Yes, but, yeah. yes that's what it was. But... Also, if you're way, way, way not sensitive enough, these are the relations, these are the conversations that needs to be had when you're dating, when you're starting to court the person, because it's not like you date somebody for a year and then all of a sudden you know who they are. If you're really dating for a good while and you're around them and you're really spending time and being intentional, you're going to figure out who they are. And then you communicate, well, you know, I realize that you don't open up to me and I only see the good things, which yes, life is good between us. But when something happens, I don't really know how you approach this or you brush this off. And that kind of bothered me. Mm -hmm. And with us, I spoke to you about your lack of sensitivity. And I still do sometimes when I'm like, you weren't sensitive to my 
feelings or you mm-hmm. weren't sensitive to this situation. Um, and I'm not looking for you to cry for everything, but just to open up and share what you feel at certain times. Because even if you wear a hard exterior, there's still points where you're going to feel sad, depressed, anxious about something, whether you expl- express it or not. Um, and I don't know that I, per, me personally, I couldn't be with somebody that's a super anxious or super emotional person because the two of us would just sit in a ball and cry all day long and mm-hmm. that's not healthy. And so I think there needs to be a little bit of a, a balance. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have one of those like scales. It should more, be a, like a yin and yang. Yes. Kind of. You're kind of lacking sensitivity and me being overly sensitive. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to also draw me back in and be like, babe. That's not what was said or that's not what was meant and pull me back in from being that sensitive Mm -hmm. Sally. Um, So, yeah. So, yeah, at the the end of the end of things, I think it boils down to having that trust and having that vulnerability to trust someone with. I need a manicure. Sorry. (laughs) I was looking at my hands. All right. Got it. (laughs) Noted. (laughs) Noted. He wasn't going to give me what I was just telling him. So, yeah, we just got to find those vulnerabilities and find that person that we can trust. You got to find the vulnerabilities or allow yourself to be vulnerable. Sure. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Thank you for being vulnerable with me. I got you anytime. All right. Thank you guys for joining us on the Love Lounge. Like and subscribe. I don't. This is so annoying. I want to keep saying that. Can you say it? Like and subscribe. You don't even say subscribe properly. You say subscribe. Like and subscribe thank you (laughs) (laughs) later see y'all next week bye